This demonstration will provide some suggestions towards processing the data for a Phase 2 environmental site investigation using RockWorks 17. Before launching RockWorks, determine what coordinate system you'll be using, be it local, UTM, state plane coordinate system. Determine what units you'll be using, be they feet or meters, for XYZ and depths. Define the project area, the minimum and maximum eastings and northings, and define the name for the project. In this demonstration, it's the Black Pine. Be forewarned that we'll blast through the initial steps that are already described in detail within the RockWorks training exercises, and then we'll slow the pace down a bit. Start by creating a new project folder and giving it the project name. Next, define the coordinate system and measurement units that you'll be using. Now, define the western, southern, eastern, and northern borders of the project area. Next, show the project area within Google Earth. Save this image to a file because we'll be using it later on as a background for our maps. Use the Utilities Imagery Rectify program to rotate and crop the image to our project dimensions. For this project, we didn't have well coordinates, so we used a trick. Spot the wells in Google Earth as place marks and add the elevations shown in the lower right corner to the description field. Be sure to save all these place marks within a separate group within the Google Earth data tree. When you've finished spotting all the wells, right click on the group that contains the well place marks and select the copy option. Now, select the Utilities Earth Apps Extract Point Data option. This program will copy the Google Earth place mark data from the Windows clipboard into the RockWorks datasheet. In the process, it will also convert the longitude-latitude data to the coordinates that you defined for the project. At this point, you can add additional columns and data. In this example, we've added symbols and geochemistry for three sampling seasons. To map this data, select the Grid-Based Map option. We'll start by creating a grid of the 2013 data. The triangulation algorithm, without edge interpolation, will be used for the gridding. The rectified satellite image will be used for the map background. This will show the 2013 plume floating above the satellite image. Next, the same process is repeated for the 2014 data and the 2015 data. To create an animation, a list of these grid names and sampling dates is created within the Utilities datasheet. The Utilities Grid Morph option is then selected, and the morphing program is adjusted to use this list. After a few minutes, an animation showing the plume migration over time will be displayed. The next video, titled Black Pine Phase 3 ESA, will describe how to convert this data into a relational borehole database in order to model and visualize the data in a true three-dimensional fashion.